some of the ways that we understand American gay history is through the, the Stonewall uh, uprising as a before and after, right? But I think before Stonewall, there was this incredible moment of, of, of gay liberation, queer liberation, black liberation in the 20s in Harlem. Most people remember learning about the Harlem Renaissance in school. Langston Hughes, blues, jazz, an explosion of artistic talent. But what we don't learn about is that Harlem was also a thriving gay community. Uh, so the way that Harlem became a haven for LGBT life is the way that it became a haven for Black people um, from all over the world, really. It became this crossroads, right? And, and the big part of this is the Great Migration, uh, which obviously meant that a lot of Black people came came north, especially to, to cities that are now considered Black cities like Chicago and, and Harlem in New York City. It was known at the time as the Black Mecca, right? And so it, it was in some ways the largest Black city in the world. Um, and it did, of course, include a lot of um, energy and excitement, cabaret, blues, jazz. So it really was in some ways a crossroads of all of these different um, artistic and musical and cultural energies. Uh, a lot of white patrons would go uh, to Harlem, to quote unquote slum, because the mores were much more relaxed. Um, and especially during the prohibition era, a lot of these were in some ways, uh, you know, speakeasies. Vices flourished in Harlem because African-Americans did not have the political power to be able to um, demand that government keep these things out of their neighborhood. And the corruption of the police and of judges, all of that enabled gay activity as well as all kinds of other activity to thrive in Harlem. A lot of the reasons that a lot of black folks came to Harlem was because they weren't allowed to be in other parts of the city, right? Um, and so again, it, it's a paradoxical form of freedom that's that's based out of uh, you know legal, economic, uh, and political disenfranchisement. To this day, when people study the Harlem Renaissance, they often don't consider the LGBTQ aspects of it. And part of that is because many of the gay writers did not actually identify as gay. And Langston, he's a wonderful figure in the, in this era because he's considered somewhat queer, but he was never, uh, again, never fully out politically. Whereas Richard Bruce Nugent is the poster boy uh, for someone who was unashamedly out. And there certainly are many jazz figures who um, were gay. Gladys Bentley was notorious for wearing men's clothing in public. Uh, I think she would be what we would call a butch lesbian. Uh, and she wore a white tuxedo and she played with gender. There was also, of course, the drag ball scene in Harlem, uh, which not everyone talks about. That's That goes all the way back to the 20s in Harlem. And so it was quite a free time. And ironically, uh, that freedom of sexual expression as well as gender fluidity um, really uh, petered out. The Great Depression is, is, is said to have caused the, the downfall of the, of the Harlem Renaissance, as well as the increasing conservatism in American culture after the Second World War. That conservatism is one of the reasons the Harlem Renaissance isn't remembered as a time of gay liberation. So there was a retrospective closeting, so to speak, uh, of these figures. The consequences of not teaching the period of the Harlem Renaissance as being inherently queer is that queerness remains white in the cultural imaginary because we don't have this story of black queerness. I think a lot of people talk about the Stonewall uh, Rebellion in 1969, and a lot of us are trying to re-understand it as being centered on trans women and trans women of color. Um, and in a sense, it's a similar story where a lot of the black and brown um, queer people were the ones who were at the forefront of this movement. And so it's important to uncover this history to, again, recover these ancestors uh, who really uh, led the charge and try to unforget all the liberation that they created. Mm -hmm.